The world is changing fast. We don't know how we are going to produce enough food to feed 9 billion people and not destroy the environment in the process. So many more people to feed. Escalating food and energy prices, water shortages, a changing climate, and the list goes on. So here we are, a group of scientists working for a food secure future, meeting in sunny California. We are here to rethink how we do science to make a bigger difference. We want to help transform the developing world's agriculture and food systems. We are nothing if not ambitious. People are adaptable. Farmers are adaptable. So are scientists. We are changing how we work and trying new approaches to solve the big, so-called wicked problems. Poverty, climate change, environmental destruction, and loss of species. This is good, but it's not good enough. We're running out of time. Our wicked problems are likely to overrun our solutions unless we learn together better and faster. Here's the good news. We have evidence that we can speed things up, bring real benefits to people, and bring this to scale. Well, maybe the latter is more of a hypothesis, one that this group wants to test. Here are some examples of what we are doing differently. Crowdsourcing is now being tested to understand what seeds and seedlings different people want and how to better serve those diverse needs. Learning alliances are bringing private sector executives to farmers' fields. They learn firsthand from farmers struggling to feed their families. They then work with the scientists and farmers to develop and release varieties that make a difference on those small farms. Innovative mentoring programs are speeding women's advancement in agricultural sciences and their institutions in the developing world. Farmer business hubs are bringing together farmers, agribusinesses, NGOs, and farmers get training, seeds, credit, and market information. They sell their milk, share their knowledge, and earn money. Participatory selection and breeding of crops is addressing women's needs for food that use less wood and take less time to prepare. Farmer-to-farmer -farmer learning videos, radio and TV programs are spreading the word of best practices based on science and speeding adoption of new technologies. And I'm sure all of us can think of many other examples. Whatever fancy terms we use, at the end of the day, it's all about people. People from different backgrounds, people from different perspectives and expertise, forming partnerships to learn from each other and solve complex problems. But here is the rub. We've all experienced how messy and time-consuming partnerships can be and how hard it is to take successes to scale. What we may not always appreciate is just how beneficial this joint learning can be. These approaches tend to level the playing field empower individuals and communities, create benefits that endure, and truly build local capacity. So we can see that shifting how we do science in this way really works. But what we can't see yet is how to involve more people, speed it all up, so that our solutions appear to us to be as big as our problems. Let's focus less on the present and instead view the present through the future we want to create. Just recall the skepticism around the sequencing of the human genome, and yet now, we are in that world. Our research suggests that what's going to be critical in the future is creating and nurturing spaces to innovate. This doesn't have to take a lot of time. What it will take is being strategic and being intentional about spanning boundaries. Imagine a fertile safe space where diversity is embraced and where we can together grow, spread, and harvest our best ideas and successes. We have the pieces. We don't yet have all the people, but we can create these environments that attract more people and allow us to learn together better and faster. Cultivate the future.